We got the street, suckers! Can you dig it? <laughs> My career started slow, but, uh, but well, and good quality. You know, I cut Badlands for Terry Malick, then we did Days of Heaven. We were getting it ready for distribution, and that's when I went to work on Warriors, because I had a lull in what I was doing. The movie Days of Heaven was done, but I had some time on my hands, and Paramount was still paying me to deal with the distribution of Days of Heaven, because we were making a dozen 70 millimeter prints. And we, I had to set up the theaters that it was gonna play in 70 millimeter. So I was traveling around the country doing that. And they asked if I would, uh, in, since I have some free time, would I be willing to go to work to help finish up the editing on this feature for them called Warriors? And I said, uh, sure. And it was for Walter and Larry Gordon was the producer. And uh, they were people I knew. I actually had met Walter Hill about, uh, oh, six years before Warriors because I edited a low, extremely low budget uh, uh, zombie movie uh, called Messiah of Evil. And Walter is the first actor you see in Messiah of Evil. And my cousin, uh, cuts his throat in that first scene. And so I had known Walter from then. You see what you get, warriors? You see what you get when you mess with the orphans? <laughs> Walter was with us the whole time that we were cutting. It depends on what scene he wanted to uh, work with us on, but he would come to the cutting room and he'd come to my room or David Holden's room or Freeman Davies' room and uh, and just sit with us as we edited. Walter would come and say to me, for instance, he said, I want you to cut the scene in the park where they have the fight with the baseball furies. And he said, uh, you know, cut it like it's a rock concert. I said, you got it. And what Walter wanted was he wanted it cut sort of quickly, you know, uh, a fast pace, uh, just, just giving it a, a rock and roll quality. The opening of the movie was a challenge. The, the whole, you know, the gang, you know, where all the gangs come together. Uh, because we had to figure out, all right, who do we feature? Uh, what do we show? Do we want to not give anything away? Uh, and stuff like that. So it was, and it was a tremendous amount of footage for that opening, because it was all the gangs. There was footage on every gang. And, um, and so, uh, that, it, it was difficult, and the opening is, it's, I mean, it's, it's 10 minutes long, probably, that whole opening, the, the whole sequence before they leave, before the riot starts, and, uh, um, and so that was the biggest challenge, I'd say, of all, of everything in the movie. I think they just made us. You recognize them? Orphans. So far down, they ain't even on the map. Real low class. Numbers. I do remember specifically, I had to cut a scene that kills sort of the guy that seems like he's the second lead. He ends up getting killed because he gets uh, knocked down and pushed in front of a moving subway car. And that was done because uh, the studio and the producers couldn't come to a deal with that actor's agent. And so Walter said, well, let's just kill him off. And that's what we did. He shot a scene with a stunt double where the guy falls off of the subway station platform onto the tracks, and then a train comes and runs him over and kills him. 
I cut that scene. But it was funny that that happened. It's the only movie I ever worked on where I had to kill off an actor because his agent and uh, the studio couldn't come to a deal. <laughs> You're dead. Swan! Paramount pulled the movie after like three weeks because theater owners were so upset with the people that were coming to see the movie because gangs were coming to theaters to see the movie. And theater owners didn't like that. And I remember talking to a theater manager in a, in a, in a very nice theater and in an area of Los Angeles called Westwood that had like four or five major movie houses in Westwood. And he said, oh, I couldn't wait for them to pull Warriors out. I was at the theater where it was playing. And he said, we couldn't wait for uh, the studio to pull that movie out. We couldn't stand the people that were coming to see it. It's treasured. It's literally treasured. I've walked into uh, restaurants and stuff where they happen to show movies at the bar and stuff like that. When, and I've walked in when Warriors was playing. And, and the people are, uh, they, they won't move. They're, they're locked onto it. It's really something, how popular it is today. It's incredible. And the fact that Paramount pulled it from theaters, it was amazing. Good news, boppers. The big alert has been called off. It turns out that the early reports were wrong, all wrong. Now, for that group out there that had such a hard time getting home, sorry about that. I guess the only thing we can do is play you a song. What I w learned on Warriors was to not be afraid of trying things. Um, I think that it was a really fun, experimental film, in a way. Uh, it was unlike anything that had been made then, and. I think there were six other gang movies that were made in the same time period, and none of them were like Warriors. Uh, and some of them were interesting. Wanderers was a very interesting and fun movie. Um, uh, but they weren't like Warriors. Warriors, in a way, was tougher, edgier, and all at the same time, really fun. And it's, it's lived for a long time like that. People love it. I think that's what I learned from it, is that you can really take chances. And the, and the better movies are, are the ones that take chances. <laughs>